Assalamualaikum and hi. My name is Seri Kalisa binti Abdul Kadir Jalaini. My matrix card number is 2022-947-143. Assalamualaikum. My name is Fatiha binti Asbar and my student ID is 2022-919931. Assalamualaikum. My name is Dayang Fatin Nabila binti Salim. Student ID 2022-745-597. Assalamualaikum and hi. My name is Nikki Adriana binti Arifin. My student ID is 2022-746-055. My name is Nufatiha binti Asbar and I will be explaining about the menu. And here we have introduction, project significant, employees data, payroll data for full time, payroll data for part time, pivot table and pivot chart, and pay slip. To activate all this button, we use hyperlink, and for that, we 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 right click on the button we want to apply the function, and then we go to the insert table select hyperlink option and choose the place in this document and link it to the introduction for the introduction button and this is how it works we also use hyperlink for the back to menu button and i will show you one by one for project significant back to menu employees data back to menu payroll data full time back to menu payroll data part time back to menu pivot table and pivot chart back to menu and lastly our pay slip back to menu and that's all from me and i will be back later for the pivot table and pivot chart now i will be explaining about the introduction of our company the Axpar Kuala Lumpur was established in 17 august 2021 with a total of 30 staff since the AXPAR was established, the system is a bit inefficient. We decided to implement the employee's payroll system to smooth up the payroll system management. The employee's payroll system will assist the AXPAR effectively, also efficiently, managing and analyzing the data employees. This is because the management can accurately review the data via the payroll system that created for the employees. Therefore, the AXPAR will have an efficient payroll system and can have a better operation. Next is the project significant. Firstly, it helps to ensure a smooth process of the organization in the process of clicking in the data. Secondly, it allows easy management of employee salaries, wages, taxes, and other deductions. Next, it helps to enhance the payment making process to each respective employees in the organization as the data has all the necessary information needed. And last but not least, the project is significant is it helps to ensure that the information is securely locked and cannot be viewed by anyone outside the organization. Now moving on to the data employees that consists of all the data for 30 employees working at the AXPAR Kuala Lumpur. These employees' data include details such as name, age, gender, department, designation of employees, payroll and employees' ID that were created for the employees respectively. The employees' data also can be assessed easily by the top management. Furthermore, based on these employees' data, we can assess their working hours monthly, but for this data, it only shows for specific months that we are going to calculate, which are January and also February. For full-time workers, the working hours are maximum 192 hours as they will be working 9 hours per day, while for part-time workers, maximum are 144, excluding a holiday once per week. All of the data that we gain from the company are from the documents that are filled by the employees through form, where this will make the process of filling out the data quicker and more accurate. Now we are going to look at the function that we use in the employees' data, which is the data validation. Based on our company working position, we have seven types of departments which are beauty staff, nurses, office manager, receptionist, supervising beautician, and also cleaning staff. Hence, using data validation is easier as we get to click to their department quickly without typing the full title. 
Besides that, we also use the function of data validation for gender and also position column in the employee's data as this will save more time. My name is Dayang Fatin Nabila Binti Salim and I will be explaining about the payroll data for both full-time and part-time employees. The payment of payroll is made on every 1st of the next month. Hence, January salary is paid on the 1st of February and the salary of February is paid on the 1st of March. For full-time employees payroll, there is data validation in the department column to determine the data inserted is correct. The basic salary of each employee is fixed. However, there is bonus paid in the month of January because of the Chinese New Year celebration for all the full-time employees. The overtime payment is based on their bonus. The sum formula is used to calculate the gross salary, which is by adding the basic salary with the bonus amount. As for the net salary, the amount of gross salary is deducted along with the EPF and the tax. The percentage of EPF and tax is gathered from a confirmed source. However, there is no bonus for the month of February. For the part-time employees payroll data, data validation is also used for the department column and a formula of VLOOKUP is used for the employee's ID and working hours. The rate of the part-time employees is based by adding the total working hours per month and multiplying by the total working hours per day. The overtime payment, however, is calculated by multiplying the overtime rate with the overtime hours. The net salary is calculated according to the monthly rate and the overtime payment of each employee. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nur Fatiha bin Diasbar and I will be explaining about the pivot table, pivot chart, filters, and slicer. Here, we divided it into four, which are for full-time net salary and part-time net salary based on the months, which are February and March. Pivot table helps us to summarize and analyze the data in a simple form from the database. We select the data from the payroll data for full-time and part-time. For example, here for pivot table for the full-time net salary for February, here we select the data from the payroll data for full-time sheet. We select the data from B5 until L20 and then we go to the insert tab click on the pivot table option and select new worksheet and this is how it looks like and here there are filters columns rows and values we put the department in the rows and net salary in the values as we want to compare the net salary from different department. Next, for the pivot chart, we click at any data from the pivot table and then we go to the insert tab, select the pivot chart and there will display many options for the pivot table. And for this project, we select stacked column. And then this is how our chart looks like. We also use department to the categories option and net salary in the values. Moreover, we also use slicer. For this, we, we also click at any data from the pivot table and go to the insert tab and choose the slicer option and then we click on the department as we want to compare the salary from different department 
and this is how it looks like with the slicer we can look at an, uh, any certain data so much easier for example for the full time net salary for March we want to look at the data of net salary for office manager uh, and receptionist and for example we want to compare two department we can use the filters and select the beauty staff and receptionist click and then there will be two data of net salary for full-time workers beauty staff and receptionist for much we also can select three department in here any changes from the payroll data sheets will directly change the pivot tables and charts data and that's all for the pivot table and charts next i will explain on payslip as we can see here in this sheet we use data validation index and match formula to make the payslip function first i will explain on data validation to begin with data validation can prevent data entry by an organization to certain cells as it will notify users to enter a valid data when a user enters invalid data, it will display an error code. This data validation will come out with the employee's information based on what has been set up from the employee's payroll data. All things said, we went to the data tab and click on the data validation command. From there, a dialog box will pop up and we choose the list in the allow section and selected the payroll ID information in this employee's payroll sheet which is from E5 to E20 and click OK. So the E5 started from Nur Shahada all the way to E21 Farah Shahira. So here is how it works. As you can see when you selected a different employee ID a different employee's name will pop up according to its respective employee ID. This payslip will show a different employee ID of different respective employees. The data validation here will make it easier to find the payroll ID information from all employees by using their employee ID on the. Thus, from this data validation, the index and match function will be a helpful hand and work together in making the payslip work. Next, after the data validation has inserted, now we put the index and match formula in the formula bar to make it the data change according to the employee ID selected. Why do we use index and match function instead of VLOOKUP? That is because VLOOKUP cannot recognize function and read the data well in our project as it becomes an error whenever we use it. Thus, we try another alternative which is the index and match formula where it resulted in the same final result that we want in the VLOOKUP. Index and match function is not that hard anyway as we just need to insert the data in the right places and formulas and it is a combination from two formula into one. First thing first, we selected the data from employee's payroll sheet from B5 to L20 and named it as data. To prove it, when we type data in this name box and press enter, it will be selected all the information that I have mentioned earlier. Moving forward, we click on the C5 line cell which is the name of the employees and type in the index and match formula. But firstly, we type in the index and data representing the array. Match will be under the row and number. And here is when match formula take over. So from now, E5 will be under the VLOOKUP which is the employee ID. As for the lookup array, is in sheet payroll data full-time from E5 to E20. 
and 0 is the match type which we have 0 to 2. 0 is the exact match. From here, the match formula is now done and the index formula will continue its algorithm. 1 will be put under the column number representing the first column in the employee's payroll, which is the name. So, the final formula will be like this. After that, we just copy the full formula and place it on other cell needed. And here is how it turns out. Only the number at the back will change. That is because I have mentioned earlier, the number at the back is representing the column number in the employee's payroll sheet. So, each one of these cells need to use the exact number in their payroll sheet column. As for example, in overtime, the column number was written 6 because in the employee's payroll sheet, overtime was number 6 from the name column. All things being said, that is how our payslip functioning well. Thank you.